Um, our interview today with Ron Robin is sponsored by our friends over at Be Well Dispensary. My personal favorite item right there is the uh, blue raspberry gummies right now. Ooh, They're delicious. tasty. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Ron. Hey, this is fun. This is really fun. And so, Silly, but fun. I know. Oh. This is the coldest it's been in here since we started doing this. When we first started, it was like 95 every morning. We were all sweating <laughs> through, especially Jonathan. Wow. <laughs> He's a sweater. It's always sweater weather with Jonathan. <laughs> Right now? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, most of you may know Ron as the owner of the Muse restaurant in the East End. And some of you may know that he has been a New England DJ staple since the 60s. Can you tell yes. our viewers a little bit about um, who's Rumpel Carey? Oh, my. <laughs> Where'd you dig that up? I did a lot of research for this. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> My first commercial radio job was at WLYN in Lynn. I was still in college at the time at Emerson. And I just wanted to have a cool name on the air. Um, my family name is Polcari. Um, some people said Polcari. And my father was a drummer. And he called himself, I thought it was really cool, Paul Carey. Paul Carey? Paul Carey? Cute. <laughs> All right, sort of cute. Then um, I said I'd like to do that, but I don't want to be called Paul. My name is Ron. So Ron, Paul, Carey. Okay, fine. <laughs> the first show was Starlight Serenade, so I get to talk very slowly. <clears throat> but I don't talk slowly, as you can tell. <laughs> so I said, Dan Gaviez, it's Ron, Paul, Carey. Ron, Paul, Carey. Ron, Paul, Carey. So a caller called and said, you've got a very unusual first name. What? Rumple. Rumple? Carrie? <laughs> Rumple? Oh, my God. Really? But that became my nickname in college, and then eventually it became my name, uh, on-air name, for a radio station in Manchester, New Hampshire. It was the Rumple Show, and I was Rumple. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> But when I went to Boston, I got a job at WMEX in Boston. Oh, show was, that picture, Jonathan. Doing rock and roll. Oh, what, on the top 40? It's okay. so cute. With the hair, yeah. with the hair. Is it? Are we looking oh, at it right man. now? You look I, I love this so <laughs> much. <laughs> I'm going as you from that year Oy. for Halloween tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, the owner of the station at the time, he didn't like the name Rumple because it sounded like, no, it sounds like Rumble. And he did talk like that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Rumble. Your name will be Rockin' Robin. And it was old even then <laughs> to be called Rockin' Robin. So anyway, so eventually became Ron Robin. I legally changed it 10, 12 years ago. And uh, ta-da, that's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. When did you move to town? Oh, that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Part-time, I actually commuted from Boston um, three days a week in the 80s at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was, that was a bit of travel on the road. But yeah, yeah that was cool. I love this place. I love Provincetown. When did you take over 102.3? 1023 The Dunes. My uh, favorite radio station. It's all I play in the car. Okay, yeah, I'll get you the check. Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, we took that over in uh, one moment, please, about 10 years ago, whenever that turns out to be. I don't do math. <clears throat> I saw a great t shirt that said, Four out of three people can't do math. <laughs> I love that. All right, never mind. Um, Yes. Are you still on the air? Do you DJ yeah. still? Yeah. Uh, my husband, Edmund, and I own the station, and uh, oh, we, did, we had a lot of fun doing a morning show. Not Edmund and I, but myself and Suzanne to there, and it was just a very good, fun morning show. It just got to be a little cumbersome, so we couldn't continue doing that. But I still do PSAs, do uh, commercials, and that kind of stuff. Yep. And uh, that's, that's what I'm doing there for now. And when did you open the Muse? Uh, that was about 83. Yeah. 
It wasn't where it is now, though, right? No, no. Uh, we moved to our current location in 93 uh, because at that former location, uh, 329, oh my goodness, I can't remember the address, the old location. But anyway, um, there was some, I know it's disgusting, but there was some sewer problem. We didn't have sewer at the time. It was a septic tank problem, and it was going to cost an enormous amount of money more than just taking the whole place and moving it. Mm -hmm. And Franco uh, had just had a fire at our current lo location at a restaurant called Franco's. It's a very sad story. And uh, so he moved out. He said, I, you know, but I, I still have a lease at the place. He said, if you want to take it over, I said, I'm out of here. So Perfect. I moved. Nice. And when did you guys start the Monday Coffee House series? Uh -huh. At the old Muse, there was a fireplace right in the center of the deck. And Peter Donnelly and I were friends. He was just moving to town. I saw him perform in Boston. And um, he had some musician friends. And he said, uh, I have some musicians coming over the house. You want to come over and uh, listen to them? And I said, well, at the time, the restaurant used to close in the wintertime. I said, well, the restaurant's closed, so why don't you all come over here? We'll light a fire and hang out, play music, fight a few friends. So that was fun. We did that. And then we did it again the following week. And we said, hey, this is pretty good. Let's continue doing it. And so uh, we have continued to do it. We tied in with WOMR to promote it and uh, raise money for them. And uh, so we're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, if you haven't been here in the off-season, definitely a staple of, like, community year-round entertainment and performance opportunities. My I, first performance in Provincetown was at the Muse Coffee House. Really? Yeah. This past, like, January or something. This year? Yeah. What did you do? Desperado by the Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now selling out the crown. But we can't we can't have it right now or no, we're not allowed. No, not allowed to have it. So it's the first time in <clears throat> all these years that uh, we haven't done it on a Monday. So but the Muse is also one of our very few year round restaurants that we have. So I really yeah. want to thank you for being my neighborhood restaurant for yeah. sure. Thank you. All right. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's we we challenge. do have another picture to show of you. So everybody wow. knows that Carnival <laughs> is my favorite day of the oh. year. Um, it's also my anniversary with Peter. And we like to do it up on Carnival. And it used to be that every restaurant in town did a float for the Carnival Parade. Who could outdo each other? And I don't know that anybody has ever topped what you did in 1984. Jonathan, do you have the picture? <laughs> okay. You brought an we, actual elephant. Elephant to town, yes. What? We had, uh, <clears throat> we had only owned the restaurant and had a business partner at the time who uh, was a former manager of a radio station. Um, and so we had owned the station, we had owned the restaurant for about a year. We wanted to make a big push to promote it. <laughs> That'll do it. Uh, and we used to do, you know, like we would have an animal or something to promote an event on the radio station. So he said, let's bring an elephant to town. <laughs> yes, <laughs> why not? And, and the elephant so, paraded down Commercial Street? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were able to find it in uh, New Hampshire. They delivered it down. We had went right down Commercial Street. That photo, in fact, was right in front of what is now Bula's. And uh, it was it was pretty amazing. And there, actually, there were other animals, too. There were horses in there because there were horses that were around. Mm -hmm. uh, but the police called and asked us to Pick up sweep up anything yeah. that may have fallen. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, loose change. I went around. <laughs> I did it. I just <laughs> and I later found out that the fellow who owned the elephant was cleaning the elephant poop. I just cleaned all the horse poop throughout the town. <laughs> My claim to fame is that. It's community service. Exactly. Right. See, you know how to do it, Harry. Damn. <laughs> but that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was interesting. There were many, you know, there, are, and there are a lot of folks who had uh, come to the Muse uh, over the years. Uh, so it really, 
that's been kind of fun. Um, speaking of that, am I off on a tangent? No, yeah, a little bit. No, <laughs> you're right on. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Do we have any more time in this therapy session? Because <laughs> yeah. I to go into, I've only as got a hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I was scrolling through some of uh, your more famous interviews that you did back when you were DJing in Boston oh. and New England. Where, where's the uh, Nielsen photo? Nielsen Schmielsen. This oh, was like Harry right around Nelson. Nielsen Schmielsen, right? Harry Nielsen. Yeah, that, that was the album at the time. Yeah, yeah. He had he. It was an interesting interview because he um, was fascinated by the John Hancock Building in Boston at that time the glass windows in the John Hancock building, which they were building. Yes, I am that old. <laughs> they were falling out. And his whole thing was, look, they build buildings for typewriters. They used to have typewriters back then. <laughs> Do you know what that is? And they, <laughs> Do you know what that is? <laughs> and he said there are places for typewriters and there are no places for people to live. And that was his, his whole thing. There's another story about that. Still true. I'll pass. Do you know who Harry Nelson is? I don't. Without you. Can't live. Oh, yeah. If I living is song. without the, you, the that song. can't it's, live. <laughs> I'm going to slap you. Listen, and I stand, Mariah, you know that. Um, but also, and everybody knows that Aerosmith is a Boston band, right? Mm -hmm. You promoted a concert when very, very early in their careers. Uh, Dream On had just come out. And I'd been friendly with the group prior to that coming out. And so we um, said, well, well, let's do a gig. They were getting notoriety now. So I, uh, there were these people trying to raise funds at Beverly High School. Yeah. And so we did a thing for their student council or whatever. And I said, well, I'll bring Aerosmith to the gig. They said, fine, this will be great. We'll raise a lot of money because the tickets are going to be $2.50. <laughs> you know, a funny thing about, well, that's, I guess, what they were charging back then. But a funny thing about that was when they were getting ready, <laughs> Steven Tyler said, uh, Ron, don't you think we should be getting more money for this? Because now they're starting to become very popular. Right. And they were getting, I don't know, a few hundred dollars. <laughs> Oh my God. Things change <laughs> quite a bit. A little. I don't think they're missing the money they got from that game no. at this point. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that there were. Um, that was that was there was a lot of good stuff on the on the TV side because I was fortunate enough when I was working at WBZ to get a gig uh, on BZ TV at Evening Magazine. And that program featured a lot of different things, so I got to do a lot of different things. Briefly, I drove uh, an 18-wheeler. Me. I'm 5'5", five, 18-wheeler. Five, um, oh, a trolley car. I got to do that. That was fun. That's and then um, we were talking. I don't even know what the topic was at the time. But anyway, we were going to shoot it on the top of the John Hancock building. And so, ta-da. There we were. Wow, it's pretty great. And uh, that's yeah. scary to me. Yeah, I would not be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, I said, well, if I keel over, I'm hooked up. I'm going to take them with me. I'm not going to down by myself. <laughs> that's my motto. I'm taking you down with me. So, I mean, you've lived all over New England. You've had all these amazing jobs. Like, what made you choose Provincetown to, like, open a restaurant and settle down and well, uh, I was still doing radio and television when we started doing the, the, the Muse. But there was something that happened when we opened the Muse. Um, <clears throat> we, my business partner hired um, a chef. He, did, he checked the person out. And opening night, there's a lot of hubbub in town about, well, what are they going to be doing now? And... Um, Opening night, the chef decided, apparently, he was off the wagon for a long time or something, but he decided that he was going back on the wagon full throttle. So we had a, a, a drunk uh, chef in our kitchen for opening night when a lot of locals were in. So that was disturbing. Which was an understatement, but it was disturbing. 
Uh, night number two, we closed. That day, other people in this town um, came over, prepping. They were there were even a couple of restaurant owners that came in. I said, "I want to live here. This is where I want to live." So it's cool. So that's why I decided this is where I love it here. I love it. It's my home. That is really sweet. Mm -hmm. I mean, back when people all got along, Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like that kind of energy and camaraderie mm -hmm. and community still exists in this town very much so. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, even in the restaurant business, there are so many times people are asking, oh, do you, need, do you have this? I'm out of this. Of course. We're all trying to do something for the town and for visitors. Man, it's a great place, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for everything that you do for the town and for coming here this early on a Friday morning in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invite. It was great, and I appreciate the therapy session. Of course. <laughs> Anytime. Is the Muse closed two days a year? We are. We used to be during these times because we can't find help. We close Sunday and Monday, so okay. we can give everybody a day off, including me. Excellent. Everybody, head over to the muse. They're open five days a week for the rest of the winter. I love that. I'll definitely be there. Um, and have a happy and safe Halloween from the Wake Up Family to yours. Thank you to our cast, our crew, our sponsors. Thank you thank to you Harrison. Bob. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Bob. Uh, thank you, Austin. Um, and everyone have a happy and safe Halloween. We will see you um, early next week um, while we're in DC. Yeah, check out our election special episode Tuesday, live, whatever that means. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks guys, see you soon. She's got even more costumes on. <laughs> Time is fleeting. Madness takes its toll. But listen close.